It's me, Corbs here. We are currently back outdoorsy. We've got the fishing rod today. The little rod, the little noodle bowl. We're gonna go and see what we can catch. It's only a two to five kilo rod out near one of the beaches. I'm not gonna tell you where. You might be able to figure that out on your own. So we're super early in the morning right now. It's about 8, 8.30 in the morning. Well, it's not really super early, but a lot of clouds. So I've had to wait for the clouds to come down and do some kind of filming. Can't really film in the dark. So here we are. There's an airport as well. We see a lot of planes flying over. You can see one right there. Have a look. Nice, oh, beautiful, crystal clear water. Oi! <laughs> Check it out, we've only been here a couple of hours and we've already got ourselves a thong blowout. Oh no. So we have probably only been here about five minutes in this spot and we already got ourselves a lovely thong blowout. I should be right there on. Oh no, that's not good. That's not good. It came out with the stopper as well. So it's got like a little plastic stopper on the bottom here that stops it from actually pulling through. But it... we got ourselves a lot of cracks here. It's not looking good for us. Not looking good at all. I don't think I'll be wearing them, actually. Might just leave them here and come and get them later. Stash them in the bushes. All right. We've gone and stashed them. <laughs> putting them right there. We're just putting them there and we're gonna come and get them later. So we've come to a spot that I thought might be cool to come and check out. Little did I know that it's the bird's most favorite area, lad. It's bird poop everywhere. Anyway, this is where we are. So we've walked out all the way along those rocks, found ourselves right here. It's really not that deep. We got fish like all around us, like everywhere, all around us, and not one of them is biting any of my lures. Like, I feel, think I need bait and I don't have bait. You know, sometimes fish, they want, they, they want either one or two things. They even want to, so fish either want to chew on lures or they want to chew on bait. And I don't have any bait, all I have is lures with me today, so. They don't want a part of any of my lures. None of them are working. Crankbait's not working. Soft plastic's not working. Hard spoons not working. Vibe, I've got a vibe on here. Look at that, it's like a vibe. Vibe, not working. Nothing's working. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go do a walk along, pretty much along this entire stretch of the beach. Give you our adventure series for today, a big fail. So, big F, put an F in chat for us there. We've been fishing for about four hours now. We'll try again as the, tire, as the tide starts coming lower and going out. We'll see if we can actually catch one there. But look at them, there's fish everywhere. Look, I know you can't really see them very well, but 
But they're like everywhere around here, but they're just not biting any of my lures. It's a lose-lose situation today. We're not getting anywhere. Check it out. So just over across from me is actually where Sydney's international and domestic airport is, as well as a lot of industrial areas. If you take a little stretch along here, so the airport is literally right across from us around there, and then it's all just industrial areas. So. But with this beach, there's a lot of sailing that goes on. There's jet skis. You can see there's a jet ski just down there. There's another jet ski that's hanging it around out there. Check it out. I thought I'd show you all the homes around here. So every single home around here has got themselves a beachside view. Like there's no trees. That's literally, they just, they just walk out their house and they're right at the beach. How cool is that? They're living the dream around here. Today, we're gonna go and check out Captain Cook's landing spot. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. I hope that's what it is, otherwise we're kind of screwed. But I've got the shirt off, we're on the beach. So you can see my singlet tan that I've been getting lately from all the walk-alongs we've been doing along, along Darling and Sydney Harbour. So that's, that's the tan I've got. Enjoy, enjoy it. That's the hectic sunshine, it's right there. It's right above us. I'm kind of waiting for the sun to be just above my head so it stops giving me that hectic glare. Because every time I try and put the camera on the ocean side, we just get a massive glare. So we're trying to eliminate all that. But you can see all the houses and stuff here on my right. Again, they all have the most epic views. They just walk straight outside of their house. Look at that. It just comes straight outside the house into the beach. It's got no worries. There's a massive platform that stretches all the way across and goes to like a big, big ship out there. I'm not sure if we can make that walk, but we'll have a look and see if we can get up there. If we can, we'll go for a trek and see what that ship's all about. And again, we might get into trouble, so I don't want to do that. So we've done five minutes from where our last showed us, and this is where we are. There's just more homes here on our right. They're so lucky. They all live like right on the beach. The only time I ever lived near the beach is when I used to live in Sawtell in near Coffs Harbour where my late mum used to live and like it was right near the beach like I could hear the beach every single night you could even smell the ocean you can hear the ocean if it was like cracking waves and there's like so many good fishing spots and like all that kind of stuff around there so over here I don't know any like anywhere where the fish are or anything and where I thought the fish were and like the lures and stuff I was using was no good and I've realized a lot of the people around here are using live bait or dead bait and I don't have any live or dead bait so kind of leave that out we'll see how we go we'll try again when, when it's low tide though we're having a trek some some of the boys has flipped their kayak check check it out <laughs> oh oh can you do it can you do it oh he tried Never mind, figured out that he's training, learning how to flip his kayak back over if he rolls it out in the ocean. So he, the guy's trying to teach him that if he's close to the shore, you can obviously use your paddle to dig in with the paddle into the ground to push yourself over. And then I think there's another method if you're out in the water. There is a maneuver. One of my friends is massively into kayaking. I think he watches the channel as well. Arden. Arden would know a lot more about kayaks than myself, so I don't know what that maneuver is called, but if you're watching Arden, let us know what that maneuver is called in kayaking when you need to flip yourself back upright. But this is currently where we are. Have a look at this, I'll show you. We're currently right here. We're walking towards those spiky things over there. It looks like some kind of monument of some kind, so we'll go see what the monument's about. I don't know what it's about, but we'll get back to you. We are back. We are pretty close to the ornaments now, so I figured while well, we're this close, I might as well turn the camera back on. So I initially came out here with three batteries, but we did like a morning adventure session trying to catch fish this morning. Now the camera running a lot, so we've actually run out of those batteries and I forgot the charger at home. So I have one battery left to try and film a walk along, which usually takes me three hours to film. So I filmed for three hours, we cut it down to about 20 to 30 minutes. And that's usually what we're up with, but check it out. Yeah. Oh. Oh. 
it's very rocky over here. I might have to put the shoes on. But check this out, lad. I don't know what that is. There's not a sign around here either that says like what it is. So. Putting our thongs on, we want to want to go for a trek around here. See what's in these water holes and stuff. It looks like a lot. Oysters, little periwinkle. There's like a whole family of them in here living together. So many food. There's so much food around here. If you were starving and and, and you had to like come and live around here, look, look at this. See these? The tiny little periwinkles. Very small, there's like a tiny little bit of fish, like, not fish, there's a tiny little snail that lives in there. And like most of the food that you can get from the ocean is edible, so. There isn't a lot of stuff around in the ocean that's not edible, but when this is fully high tide, this gets submerged, you can see. This gets submerged in water. Maybe some mean ass oysters. You even got some oysters in here? That's not a bad oyster, that one. It's another nice one over there. There is, a, there is a abundance of food here if you were doing like a survival challenge. But then again, what's a survival challenge when there's literally people everywhere around me? So I can't really do a solo catch and cook survival, but I can do catch and cooks. We just haven't caught anything, which is the problem. You can't do a catch and cook if you're not catching anything, but that's uh, the view of what we're looking at. There's actually a sign here on this stuff that might be able to tell us what this is. If I go this way, spin myself around, it says a quantity of darts lay about the huts. These we took away with us. Diary of Lieutenant James Cook, 29th of April, 1770. Check that out, there's another one. Let's check that one out. Let's have a look at this one. Ah, yeah, check it out, lad. It says, here we left several articles, such as cloth, looking glasses, combs, beads, and nails. Again, the diary of Lieutenant James Cook, 1st of May, 1770. There must be a lot of them. We'll check the next one out. Up we go, over we go. Whoa, look at the abundance of like food in this hole, lad. Look at it. There's oysters in here. Peri, look at this. They're everywhere, periwinkles. Abundance, the abundance of food on this rock alone is ridiculous. Check it. Get a knife and you smack that open and get yourself some nice oysterage. So we didn't actually bring a knife, but you can see someone's already had a dig at them. Look. Someone's already had a dig. No, it wasn't me. I like I, said, I don't I don't have a knife with me. It wasn't me. Ugh. Up and over we go. We'll read this one. So we're gonna read this one now. It says, from what we have said of the natives of New Holland, they may appear to some to be the most wretched people upon earth, but in reality, they are far more happier than we Europeans. So they live in a tranquility, which is not disturbed by the inequality of condition and it says the earth and the sea of their own accord furnishes them with all things necessary for life again that's out of mr cook's book or diary mr cook's diary look at all the oysters la <laughs> There's, there's oysters everywhere around here, like everywhere. I'd be careful where I'm stepping now because I only have thongs on. 
they slip off and I step on these oysters, it'd be a bad day for me. It says, Nandyaribi Baraga, can you see the vessel island? This one is Wara, Wara, Wara. Wara, 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 they all slash you all are dead. And then you got Nandyaribi Guru, can you see the cloud? Look, I don't know if that's how we pronounce any of these things. I'm obviously not a native Australian. As we approached the shore, they all made off except two men who seemed resolved to oppose our landing. But apparently, as they approached the shore, only two men seemed resolved to oppose their landing. So, this guy and this guy were the only two people opposed to their landing when they first came here. There's like a rock, a rock and stuff over there. I don't know if I want to go over there though. Um, treach treacherous conditions just to get there and I'm in thongs. So, uh, yeah, not, not the most ideal footwear. But you can see all of these oysters. They're like on top of each other. Just oysters on top of oysters is kind of hectic. Well, our pathway, our pathway ended up over there on our left, so that's practically it for our walk along on Colonel. Anyway, for those that are wondering, that's your Captain Cook landing. Another awesome walk along. We're just walking along the beach. Yeah, I don't see any way for me to get over on that side, but we missed it. But it, you can see them all three of them swimming towards their jet ski. They all three of them just fell off. Luckily, that's one of the good jet skis because if it was one of those trash jet skis, it would have just kept going. Well, the GoPro screen is extremely dirty right now. I can't clean it. I don't have a cloth with me, so. So it's like I have to walk holding, holding the stick like this because the sun is right, right behind me. And only other way would be that way. You like big planes? Check it out. That's a dinosaur of a plane. Holy crap, that thing is huge. Anyway, here's your beach. We're just walking along this beach. We are currently heading all the way down that way because that's where the car is. And then we came all, all the way. You can't even see it, but it's like way down there is the walk we've been doing. So it's probably taken me like 40 minutes just to get to this point where I am now from when we were over at Captain Cook's landing point. So, big mass of trekking today. I think we've trekked, I don't know what time I got here. I think I got, got here at like quarter past seven. Going past these rocks. I got here at quarter past seven in the morning. It was nice and glassed off, beautiful. And then by about 10, 10 a.m. The tide was a bit too still and the fish weren't doing anything so I decided to come in and do the walk instead but my feet are so sore from the walk. Have a look at that. You can see all the seaweed. Just weeds all along here. It's like you have to cast past them to get to the fish. We're gonna go give the other spot another go to see if we can actually catch a fish or not. If we can't, then that'll be it for us and then I'll probably trek off home. Got a few things to do, it is Sunday, back to work tomorrow, so that's how it goes. Anyway, we're going past all the yachts and sailboats right now and have a look. It's like a sail club out here. And then obviously the airport's just over there, so that's the mission we're doing. Oh, my feet. It's like that, my ankle. You know where the joint is, where your ankle starts? That's kind of that joint, that like ball joint. Yeah, I'll show you. Yeah, right here. So this whole area, 
That whole area on both my feet are absolutely killing right now. They are so sore. Look at a sick bat. So it's got like a hard hole and then a soft top. That's pretty cool. Just need something like that. 70 horsepower on it. Boom, you're gone. Into the ocean. That's cool. Monkey business. There's your cookie. She's gonna come with me down. I'm gonna take her down to the water with me. Me and little cookie. I got the floaty on the GoPro, so me and her are gonna go for a little swim. I need to keep her away from all those big dogs over there now. Don't know some of these dogs. Yeah. Come here. Coming. Are you coming? Oh, it's so cold. It's freezing cold. <laughs> it's very cold. Oh, hello. Hello. Oh, oh. Go, 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 get out of the water. Here you go. You okay? Enough swimming for today? Yeah, come here. As usual, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Previous video here, subscribe down there.